Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at the awesome RX bundle from Infonic. And if you like your beats dark, dirty, and gritty, then this one's for you. Let's have a look at it. First up, let's check the Infonic website to see what we get inside the RX bundle. It consists of two products, the RX 1200, which is a tribute to the Emu SP 1200, an absolutely legendary sampler used in lots of hip hop and jungle, drum and bass, you name it. And in the same vein is an RX 950 AD to DA converter. Now this isn't a sampler itself, but it does mimic the character of the, again, legendary Akai S950. Let's take a look at it and see how it sounds. And I will say, I've had a quick play and it sounds unbelievably good. So let's head on over to Ableton. Let's start with the RX 1200 first. It does come with quite a selection of factory presets, as you can see here. But first up, I'll give a bit of an explanation of the instrument itself, so I'll close out of there. In the middle section here, we have controls for tune, decay, and mix. Mix is essentially the volume. Decay is a delay tail, so a release essentially, and then tune, whether you pitch it up or down. Because the original Emu sampler was incredibly limited on internal memory, what used to happen was the sample was recorded very highly pitched up to obviously reduce the amount of time recorded, and then when played back, it was pitched down. And with that combination and the 12-bit workings of the sampler itself, it resulted in an amazingly gritty sound. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll just continue on going over the interface and how it essentially works. Below that, we have four banks of eight sample slots. So here in bank A, we have sample one, like so, which is a kick at the moment. Then we have a snare in two. And if we flick over to B, then we have the same again. So one, two, all different sounds, C and D. So obviously that means you can load up 32 samples at a time. And then if we move over to the presets, you can see this very colorful layout on the bottom right here. And that corresponds to what I just mentioned. So we have the four banks, one, two, three, four, and then each of the pads along here. So if I click this one, this is bank one, sample one. Bank one, sample two, for example. And I can also play these on the keyboard like so. In terms of the layout of the keyboard, it's not a linear mapping, which actually I think is really quite handy. And by that, I mean, if we go to the settings here, you can see the default is C1 through to G. And then we skip a few keys and then we start at C2 for bank two, which makes it really quite easy to play along on the keyboard. So obviously C is sound one for each of the four banks and so on and so forth. If you don't like that, you can change it to a linear approach. I prefer keeping it on octave. So let's leave it there. Also, when I go through the sounds, read some of these comments down here. They're really quite fun. No names are ever mentioned. So, for example, if I go to Bristol, so that's obviously the Portishead massive attack kind of thing. If we go to Brighton, I think we all associate that with Fatboy Slim. And let's see if that comment rings true. Dance music, rock and hip hop. I think that would be Fatboy Slim, indeed. Iceland, a young Icelandic woman. I think this must be Bjork, obviously. So it's really quite cool, some are more obvious than others. Some I do know, some I don't know. So I think the way to do this, to listen to the sounds, you can obviously audition them from here, like I'm doing now, pressing on the keyboard. But I think the best way to do it is to try and create something. So let's do okay here. We're currently just set on the default alive and kicking. We currently have the kick on it must be C1 because it's bank A sample one. I might just reduce this size so I can actually see the MIDI roll. Let's put this actually on 150 for now, like so. Now add a snare. Let's find some open hats. There we go, that's some hats. So that is on bank two, sound four.
Let's now find some closed hats. Here we go, that's another one. Smooth closed hat, that sounds good. This is on bank A, sound three. Let's try this one so we know that this is an octave up because it is the bank up. Let's see what else we have. Conga 2, I think. Let's put that one. That's sounding quite good. Now let's play with the tune on the bass drum. I want to pitch that down. And the snare. And then give both a bit of decay. Currently it's right at the top, which means it's disabled. But if we turn it just down a little fraction at 16, then we have some decay. I think the snare's a bit too loud, let's turn that down a bit. So now we have the basic pattern, let's go and explore some presets. Awesome. Obviously some work better than others given the pattern that I've created.
probably be my favourite so far. But immediately surpassed by that one. I think this one instantly sounds Run DMC. And judging by the description, I think that's right. Every one of them sounds awesome. But that one's obviously pump up the jam. As I said, they all just sound unbelievably good. Let's go back to, I quite like the Run DMC one, which was King of Rap. In addition, it has quite an extensive sample editor. So if we go over to here and do sample edits, then we have our collection here. So factory collection, we've got our like kicks and then we can drop that onto our pad like so. And then we can change the sample start and end point. We can change the loop direction, whether it's forward or forward loop or ping pong forward and back. Originally the SP1200 was only a mono instrument. However, it is a little bit more flexible here. We can change it to be stereo, mono, or mono left or mono right. There are three filters we can apply. And then we can change the speed at which the sample was initially recorded. As I said right at the start, it was usually recorded sped up to change the sample time used and then pitched down upon playback. So all in all, an amazing, an amazing, amazing sounding sampler. So let's move on now and let's have a look at the RX 950. So to do that, I'm basically going to duplicate this Let's rename this one RX 950, mute the first one, and I'm going to drop in 
an 808 instead of the RX 1200. And then I'm going to add the RX 950 over the top of that. So let me just translate this into something that makes sense from the 808. Let's see how this sounds. So that's fine for the purposes of this demonstration. Now let's have a play with RX 950. Now remember this is designed to emulate the Akai S950, well the DA stage of that sampler anyway. And just like the SP1200, its charm is that it sounds incredibly gritty and dirty. So to that end, let's try and grit it up. Let's send the input gain up to add a bit of saturation. We can reduce the bandwidth. And instantly you can hear just how gritty that has become now. We can roll off the tops. And then a bit of output compensation. It adds so much charm and character and just it gives that lo-fi gritty vibe. You probably wouldn't use the RX 950 and the SP 1200 together. That's not their intended purpose. They're essentially doing the same job. So you typically apply the S50 on something clean like I'm doing now with the 808 and then the RX 1200 to be used in isolation. And if you make any kind of hip hop or trip hop or that kind of music or anything along those lines, I think these are essential to have in your collection. It's an instant way to get that vibe on your tracks. So thanks for watching and we'll be back shortly with something else. See you then. Bye.